ultimately that all of that was before the end of the old covenant age in AD 70. So even Paul living in that transition, it had to come to an end for Jesus to bring everything into the fullness of the new covenant. Now, obviously, we have the record of most of the apostles dying and what happened to them. That was during that period of persecution that was taking place. The transaction of the new covenant was not fully complete. So there may have been a sense where, okay, they were in the period where they were in danger, in peril. People were trying to kill them. And obviously the Roman emperor, emperors tried to kill them. And also so did the Jewish people tried to kill them. So they were sort of in this difficult situation. Uh, and faced with that, maybe not all of them had a revelation of what the fullness of life would be. You know, we don't know. And, you know, some of us, uh, you can't read into exactly what happened with everyone because you don't know. That's the thing. We don't know the reality of what happened to Paul exactly at the end of his life. You know, we don't know exactly what happened to John because it isn't recorded. So we don't know. Um, so I, I, I'm not going to read into what happened to them in any way to say, well, that can't happen to us or it will happen to us. We've got to embrace it for our own generation. We have to serve the purpose of God in our generation. And therefore, we have to embrace everything that God has done it for us in our generation we can't go on what the last generation accepted we've got to accept every generation has to accept themselves now it would be great if several generations came together it all in agreement and that the last generation didn't die um so for me it's like the moses generation died and they all died in the wilderness until there were none left then the Joshua generation took the rest of them in for their inheritance. What didn't happen then was that the Joshua generation and the next generation then led the next generation in agreement. Didn't happen because the next generation rebelled against what Joshua had done. And they went after foreign gods. Mm. So they didn't follow on and pass it to the next generation. And that's, I think, what God wants. He wants three generations to come together in agreement. You know, to come together and say, yes, we are living in immortality. We are living in the fullness of salvation, in the restoration of all things. <coughs> Every generation seems to sort of have to start again because the previous generation doesn't want to pass everything on. Um, and if they want to defend it rather than progressively continuing it. So we've got to get a generation that says we're going to pass on the baton to the next, but we're going to walk with them. We're not going to give up and watch. We're going to continue with them, which needs immortality. You know, unconditional love. God loves us so much that he wouldn't want us to die and not receive his love, experience his love. So immortality is a natural outworking of unconditional love. Because God doesn't want us to die. 